In part one of the series, we left off right at the point where we had just planned out the major components of our system and put together a parts list with the quantities of what we would need for each of the items based on that plan. Now like most projects that involve wiring or plumbing, they always seem to start in the bilge. So we start by opening up the panels to gain access and be able to move around and do our work. Once we have access, we'll move forward with how to remove the old system as well as all the parts that you will need for the new one. While we're opening up the floor and starting to take a look at where everything is again, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel if you find these videos useful or entertaining. And it would also really help us a lot if you would go ahead and click the thumbs up or the like button just down below the video. We've often said in our videos we are not professionals at this, but we have refit two boats prior and these are the methods that work really pretty well for us. We do enjoy hearing from you on what you've done and how you might handle a specific project or task, so please do leave a comment below and we'll respond to all of them. Now let's get started on this project. Oh, wait a minute. We're just like every other typical boater and you know what happens. We run across something else that needs to be done and then we end up getting a bit sidetracked and we have to be jolted back into finishing up the thing we started. For us, that distraction took the form of moving one of the house batteries to gain better access to the copper plumbing lines for removal. These large 8D batteries are very heavy and it was just easier with the two of us. We moved it to a small mat on the floor in front of the companionway steps and then carefully carried it up one step at a time. Deb was a huge help in moving this battery not only in the boat but even more so once we got out on deck and moved it off of the boat and onto the dock. With that out of the way we thought great now we can actually get back to removing the plumbing. The problem was that when we removed that battery we found that the floor under that galley seat was just nasty. I mean look at the thing for crying out loud it's completely stained up. On top of that after some amount of water had drained on it over the years it was pretty rotted as well. It really needed to be replaced. So there I go I'm pulling it out. Let's get that sucker out of there. Then I heard that voice in the back of my head finish what you started. So I put the floor panel back down and I started to work on removing the connections that go to the back side of the shower in the rear head. Deb held the shower from within the bathroom so that when I disconnected the lines it didn't fall onto the floor. Once these were loose it was now time to move on down the lines and disconnect and remove these pieces of copper. The vertical runs in this scene go from that shower section I just disconnected on downward. Then the horizontal lines going to the right in the scene run to the other side of the head for the hot and cold feeds from the T's where I'm working now they go below the floor and they connect to the rest of the plumbing system. As I started to disconnect these 30 some odd year old connections what I found were several of them were really corroded on there. A couple came loose and some just had to be cut. Alright I just can't handle it. That floor has got to come out. Pull and voila! She's gone. So this is how I get distracted. So now I start wondering, I wonder what's down there? Let me check it out. Let's see what there is. In I go. I'm glad I did actually. Once I got down below the floor level, I could see that the compressor for the combination freezer, refrigerator, cold plates was completely covered in dust. Unfortunately, while I could see it, I couldn't quite get my body contorted in a way that actually allowed me to uh, access it and clean it from this angle. Deb to the rescue. She climbed in that same spot and was able to not only brush the fins to get the dust out of them, but also to vacuum the unit out completely to remove any other dust from it. Then, with the helping hand of a gentleman, it was time to step on out of the galley seats and back onto the regular floor of the boat. To continue the removal, I went ahead and moved into the rear head. You can see I was disconnecting the copper lines that we just disconnected. In this case, removing the actual connection from the bottom side of the faucet and removing that hot and cold faucet spigots directly from the marble countertop. Following the lines forward and removing them as we go. Here I'm actually climbing down underneath the sole of the boat in the galley so that I can access the underside of where the copper lines were connected up to the bottom of the floor. Um, some interesting positions you get yourself wedged in. Here I'm kind of facing backwards on one side of the engine with my head beyond the transmission but able to reach up and disconnect the metal strapping holding the copper lines up. As we followed the lines forward, we got to the fresh water pump and the hot water heater. I removed one of the connections from the hot water heater, but it continued to drain hot water out. This is not the time to realize that a bucket would have been a good thing to have in place, so Deb to the rescue. Oh, hold on. Let's take a moment and watch the event. And I score that an 8.9 on the boat galley balance beam event in these Olympics.
Now back to catching the water now that I have the bucket in place here. We did a little bit of exploration to understand why the water that was leaking out of the cold line that I disconnected was so hot. And what we found out was that the hot water heater did not have a check valve that should have been installed between the cold water inlet and the hot water heater tank. That should always be in place to avoid something like this ever happening. Could have really been a scalding situation had we had that hot water heater on, or heaven forbid it was running uh, through the engine heat exchanger. Let's take a look at the supplies that you'll go ahead and need for this project. I like to use the colored PEX tubing rather than just all white. That way it's a quick and easy way to identify whether you're looking at a hot or a cold line. So I bought half inch PEX and it's cheaper to buy the 50 foot roll. I got it in red and blue. Next we'll take a look at the connectors that we can go ahead and get. In this particular case I use the Apollo brand, just happens to be the brand that Home Depot or Lowe's sells, and I decided to get the crimp on style. I have here a series of T's and 90's along with plenty of clamps as well as some of the uh, inline valves that I can use as cutoffs underneath the sinks or in front of the toilet. The yellow handled device here is actually the crimping device for these PEX connections. There's a small ring and a clamp that I'll show in the next video that you crimp on and these happen to be an electronic pressure sensitive version that will actually light up a small light when you've applied the correct amount of pressure to ensure a leak free connection. The red handled tool inside of the clear bag is actually a cutting device for cutting PEX or PVC. I also always like to have vice grips, my drill and screwdriver, along with fish tape in the event that I need to reach to a uh, difficult place to pull the line through. We can take a closer look at some of the connectors we use. This here is a plug. And we really only use the plugs when we're stopping the project in the middle and want to make sure we can keep pressure on the system. We move on over to the 90 degree elbows. Pretty self-explanatory. They're sharp bends, but because it's under pressure, it's not an issue. And then onto the T's, and you'll notice we're using all brass in these. They also have plastic. And these are actually bulkhead protectors. They're actually designed for a home where that goes through a wall. So essentially, you slide the uh, slide this connector over the top of the PEX line, and then you run it uh, through any kind of a wall or surface. The black ring helps protect any kind of chafe on the PEX pipe, and then there's two holes in the end, so you can ultimately put screws in it to it, secure it in place. Works great. So it's time for a break. Take out the boat, enjoy the weather, enjoy the water, and join us for episode three when we actually start implementing the plumbing lines and showing how to make all the connections. Smooth sailing. See you next time. I've always got a kick out of the way Deb stands and relax. It's very flamingo-like. Let's compare and see. We hope you enjoy these videos. We hope you find them useful, entertaining, or just something to laugh at. And if you do, please do subscribe, share it with your friends on social media, and please click a thumbs up and a like for us. That really helps. Thanks. Have a good one.